Hi, folks. Welcome to episode 135 of the Wealth on Any Income podcast. This is where we talk about money tips, techniques, attitudes, information, and provide inspiration around your business and your money. I'm your host, Rennie Gabriel. In past episodes, we spoke about how to understand the numbers from your business, how to measure the level of pleasure based on where you spend your money, how to track your money in five to 10 seconds, what determines how close you are to complete financial choice, and how to run your business without being in your business. And last week, we had JJ, who leveraged his YouTube channel and created 57 million views as a magician. He knows how to get attention. Today, we have as our guest, Philip Fucic. Philip is a business analyst by trade, specializing in price increases for undervalued solopreneurs, experts, and other service providers who offer great value but find it difficult to explain what they do. Philip is also a founder of a crushed startup and worked on several IT spin offs as a marketing manager before his dad got sick and he became a freelancer. This was allow him to spend time with his dad. Above all, he is a dad of two boys and a massive fan of Lego. <laughs> Philip, welcome to the Wealth on Any Income podcast. Thanks, Rennie. Glad to be here. Okay. It's sort of. I don't know. You talk about pricing for solopreneurs, but tell me a little bit more about what you do and why you do it. Increasing prices is is pretty straightforward. Like you know, yeah. you cross one one thing and and add a number, and uh, that, that's higher. And now you did it. But that's like the old Monty Python joke of I'm going to tell you how to play the violin, right? I'm going to show you how to do that. You you hold it like this and take this piece and go like this. Now you know how to play the violin, right? Yeah. So th the thing is, when you're an expert, when you're good at something, most people that you sell to don't really understand the full value of what you can bring them by definition. Right. And nobody wants to pay for the value that they that they don't see. So I help people communicate their value in a way that is closer to their uh, clients, because we can all speak pretty fluently in front of our colleagues and they can be impressed. Right. But <laughs> people who can value you like this are your colleagues or your peers or your competitors, they're not going to hire you. So people who <laughs> value you don't need you. People who need you don't value you. It's a paradox. I call it the expert's paradox. So I help people get out of the uh, expert's paradox because, and so let, let's come to why. Yes. Uh, because it's a missing piece. Because people that are talented, that are really good at their jobs, can't catch a break. Because the schools assume that we're all going to work for somebody all our lives and that somebody else is going to take care that the clients appreciate what they're getting. And that support is very expensive, as, <laughs> as witnessed by anybody who ever worked for anybody else, right? But once it's gone, it cannot just be wished away. Right. I'm, I'm good at my job, so I'm going to get enough money to, to, to support my family and, and my financial goals. That that does not follow. And people are woefully unprepared. And I've worked now in, in the last five years, I worked uh, with people from ac across the world, 30, uh, 30 plus countries and, and many, many industries. And the, the end result is usually. 15 to 45 percent higher price within a couple of months and i'm not magic i promise i'm not magic it's a high number because people are inherently undervalued and under undercharging people like that experts are inherently undervalued and i have found this to be true no matter if we're talking about solopreneurs if we're talking about basically underdogs there's so many things depressing their price and basically nobody telling them to, uh, how to, to, to get higher. So as as Yoda says, I, I don't teach, I simply reveal. Uh, uh, and then, then people say, oh, 
Oh, right. Well, that would be useful if I knew that one. <laughs> that's, wanna, that's why. I want to validate one of your comments that I've seen, you know, in the United States as well. I know you're in Croatia, but here in the United States, the school systems are designed to manufacture employees, not Absolutely. entrepreneurs, not business people, but people who will go out and get a job and work for someone else. So, of course, if they're leaving that environment, they have no clue as to what to do when it comes to pricing. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically like that everywhere. I work a lot with Australia. Uh, I work a lot with, with Canada. I work with South Africa. I work with Vietnam. And, uh, of, of course, across Europe, it's like that everywhere. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm a business major. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a business analyst. And I, I actually taught entrepreneurship uh, in, in my alma mater, in, in, my, in my uni. Um, and yeah, it's still fine. You, you, you will make your own company, maybe. Maybe that's going to be a, a tech startup or may, maybe you'll start a factory. 95% of people that I see do neither. Okay, so tech startups are wonderful. But mostly I'm talking about somebody who has been a really good employee for 10, 15 years, hasn't really been validated, hasn't really gone anywhere and said, okay, that's it. I can do this on my own, right? That's, that's not a factory. That's not a tech yeah. startup. It's not something completely different that is still millions and millions of people out there, right? And, and that makes sense. Now, you're probably aware that I donate 100% of the profits from the work I do, from the programs, books, and so on uh, yes. to vet, animal and veteran charities. Tell me about what you do to support other people that could be viewed as being charitable. I've worked with a number of people pro bono in, in general. I support businesses, business owners, basically, who cannot afford to hire me. So I have free Q&As. I have a completely non-selling uh, newsletter that I uh, write twice a week that I've done about 150 issues of. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, that has like a 55 uh, plus percent open rate. And at mm. this day and age, you, you know, that's yeah. because people like it. That's enormous. It's enormous. It's, it's very short. That, that, that's what oh. it is. Some, also sometimes funny. Uh, Oh, but uh, I work with, with local uh, NGOs here who, who help people start their own businesses. And I, I, I can give you an example. N uh, NGO meaning non-government organizations? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's just in case some of the listening audience hears NGO and it's like, oh, what is that? Is, is that a farm? See, I, I told you, I told you I'm a business analyst by trade. It's yeah. <laughs> So uh, dumb acronyms are in my blood. So I, I wanted to give you an example. I was uh, contacted by a frustrated young mother over LinkedIn. And she said, please, you know, could you just uh, meet with me for half an hour? I'm, I'm going, I'm really pissed, right? Yeah. And so she's in, in Pakistan hmm. and she does web as many people from there do. Yeah. And her rate is about three dollars an hour. Oh, and, oh. yeah. Uh, for Pakistan, if that's a lot or a little, no, that's not. That's not a lot. Or, it's not or, a lot, or, no matter where you are. Okay, exactly, exactly. And so I asked her what her dream rate was. So dream rate, and she yeah. said twenty five dollars an hour would be an absolute dream. So that's not. I'm going rich rate, but that's like a solid rate. Mm -hmm. So three dollars is not even. Close to close. Okay. Yeah. So what happened? Well, uh, she got. Uh, sh she usually does these uh, web revamps, and uh, she prices uh, them uh, at seven hundred dollars, and it's a significant chunk of time. So that's her price on her web, and she got an email that says, "I have an offer for for this already for six hundred. Can you go mm. lower?" Oh. And the seven hundred dollars—that's that's a three hour, hours, uh, yeah. three dollars per hour rate, right? And she says, you know, nobody respects me. You know, they, they, they can't even imagine what it. So okay, 
And I said, yes, that's horrible. Let's, uh, uh, let me give you a suggestion here. Firstly, would you even dream of doing this job for, 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 for the money that, that he is proposing? He's not proposing, he's proposing that she goes against her own interests, right? That's her, right. that's his proposal, right? And she said, no, absolutely not. I said, okay, great. So you can't lose a client that you, you that you never had, right? right? Right. Now, go and look at th this person's current web page. And it's going to be trash. And she said, how do you know? Well, you know, he did this last time. Uh, so somebody did something for him and said, right? So, so it's going to be trash. Yeah. Then make a list of absolutely everything that you would change if you were paid properly. Okay, on that web page. Mm -hmm. Then enclose this to, to the uh, uh, reply and reply the following. Dear sir, I would be glad to, to work on this project. However, what you said that should be done is not everything that should be done. Everything that should be done is in, in the attached list. And I'll be happy to, to do that for 5,000. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and she said, well, he's going to say no. I said, why do you care? Right. Right. Why do you care? At least you're going to shock him back. At least. And she said, you know what? I'm I'm angry enough. I'm going to do this. And she she, she says she's going to do it. Next day, I, I get her pinging again. Please, please, please. Okay. What happened? What happened? His reply was, Can you do it for three thousand? <laughs> and she said, if I say yes, he, he will know that I caved and and he he will, I said, absolutely, he will keep on pushing. So we won't, we won't do that. We won't, look, this is what we do, okay? We say, oh, that would be like bare, you know, bare minimum. If I'm going to do that for, for 3,000, there's going to be four non-negotiable terms. One is 20% uh, upfront. Two, is this little bit of text, somebody else is going to do it, I'm not going to do it. It's about us, I'm not going to research, you can do it on your own. Three, if I like how this turns out, I'm going to use this without asking any further for as a reference. And four, you only get two change requests. After that, it's $25 an hour. Mm. Mm. So if you say yes to all of that, I can do that for 3,000. End result, so it's it's not not a very long story. End result, uh, they settled for three and a half because he didn't want to pay up front. She did the job. He paid. Fabulous. I I never charged her a dime, but uh, since then I get a lot of views from Karachi because she told all her friends, and and uh, uh, my material suddenly started spreading over over. Uh, <laughs> Over that part of the world, and clicks are something. Yeah, and uh, uh, the feeling that I helped was something. So this is this is something typical. I have a list each year of people who send me a message or, or tell me thanks. I used your free stuff and I increased my price. You know, thanks so much. Uh, that's that's wonderful. I uh, th that that list is very close to my heart. And of course, to people who can pay, I charge. But yes. uh, that's perfectly a good deal for me so i do a lot of free stuff and then i then i uh, do all uh, 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 some paid stuff and that that's the balance so that would answer the question of, of uh, yeah so. howard so you're giving back in that way to the people who really need you directly so thank you for that philip now let me ask you a couple more questions this is kind of like a combined question okay uh, tell me about what you see was your biggest failure, whether it was personal or business, and what was the insight you gained from that? What did you do with that? Well, you you mentioned my crushed company. So <laughs> right out of college, I founded a company based on an award-winning award business plan at the time and managed to, to reach eight employed people, so, so eight employees before uh, the, the financial crisis got us because people, clients couldn't pay us. And, and so we owed like one tenth of what we were owed, but mm. you know, at some point we just simply got crushed. Anyway, 
this left me with a lot of doubt and debt, which took years to clear. However, as you said, I you used it uh, for, for something. Look, I realized just how hard value communication is, mm -hmm. just how hard do you have to work in, in order to, to clients to see what you see for them, right? And it, it's a frustrating thing when, when you know, when you look at the client situation, or he tells you that um, their situation and you know you would be really good for them but they don't see it right i i call i call that luck leverage right mm -hmm. it, it it was if somebody was threatening you with a spear and you had a gun but they they never saw a gun so they start laughing <laughs> what are you gonna do with that right and you know you can hurt them they, they they keep on menacing. So so you, you shoot the tree and they say, whoa, 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 right? Yeah, now we understand each other, right? <laughs> so it's it's locked leverage. That's that's a concept that I got from uh, fr from there. You 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 can be a very, very, very good thing for the client and then not see. And it it doesn't really matter what you see. It matters what they see. Because they they are making the the, the decision, so so sounds the the insight you gain from that is how to apply that in your oh, current yes. business. Oh, and 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 the pricing. I mean, yeah. I, I priced just like everybody else, which is using guesswork and and good well well wishing or copying other people's guesswork, also <laughs> known as the going rate. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and that's how people. So so I did many mistakes really many of them uh, in in this area and because i did them and i were f i was forced to to recognize that i'm not bulletproof and that that those were mistakes and that's that's a tough pill to swallow i can tell you uh and you probably know because i was confronted by the fact that i did all of the mistakes i could learn from them and maybe teach some other people not to, to do my mistakes. They're entitled to their own, right? <laughs> yeah, something I wanna circle back to, which I don't want anyone to overlook, was the conversation that you had with that lady in Pakistan. I think you said that's where it was. Yeah. And in any kind of negotiation where someone wants to pay less, I learned two things. And one of them is the client who wants you to do a lot of work for less money will always want you to do more work and even less money. Absolutely. So that cycle never stops. That's number one. And number two, what you said was, yes, she's willing to accept that price. However, she there are things she has to take away from him that she would have done or things that she's asking for. The, the point is, you don't just back off the price, but you say, fine, if I'm going to do it for that, then these are the situations that you have to agree to for us to come to that price. And so I think that's very important for everyone to understand about their business is don't just lower your price because it reduces not only your value in the client's eyes, but your value in your own eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. And she didn't just try to haggle. No. Right? She didn't say, oh, you know, I work very hard. I have a small kid. I deserve this. No, 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 no. Yeah. The, the, the reason why this worked is, and so the, the guy ended up paying, you know, many times more than he yeah. offered. But the reason that, why that worked is because she uh, uh, corrected the brief. Yes. She showed him that if he did find somebody who will do it for 500, he would not get what he wants. What mm -hmm. he wants is all of these things, and he can't know that all of these things are wrong because he doesn't understand enough about the problem, right? And because yeah. uh, without this correction of the brief, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. And she 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 mentioned the the twenty five uh, yes. uh, dollar Dollars rate and, an and, and everything. And so, so it sounded like I'm actually going to get more by 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 going with this lady than trying to, to 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 find somebody to squeeze on the price because you know I tried this and it didn't really work my my my, my uh, web page is still faulty enough that, that I have to do this again so 
this this is why this worked. If if she just tried to play hardball, it wouldn't work. Yes, right. No, exactly. It, it was a negotiation, but an intelligent negotiation. And exactly. so I'm going to assume, Philip, that my listening audience, there will be people who will want to reach out to you. Is there something that you can offer that also supports them and provides them a way to get in touch with you? I mean, uh, a free, some sort of free offer? Sure. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll leave you leave you the link, uh, uh, but but I'll say so. So my my web page is uh, fearless minus pricing dot com. So just fearless pricing, basically. And there I have a start here sec uh, uh, section where there's uh, now a uh, 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 hundred and fifty or something like that items that are that are free. Um, they, they are divided into some some sections so negotiation pricing uh, scope control uh things like that so so you can drill down in, in, into into what you like so these are like fixed assets that that you can always go and look and use they're meant meant to be used and uh of course i have my uh, uh free q and a's uh which uh, happen every so often uh, but whoever has a question uh, can reach reach out to me either through uh, uh, email uh, or or uh, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and I tend to use those questions. So so gather them and then make a, a live session where people either come and and ask me in person, or I answer a previously uh, asked question in writing. So I I talk about it. I don't gatekeep. As in, I say, well, now this this is the part that, that you get for free, and this is the part. I know not everybody can afford this, and in return, I basically use what I say as content. Ah, yeah. So, so if somebody comes and asks me, I won't use the, their footage. Uh, I'll ask their question anonymized, of course, but my answer could become content. So, so that's that that's what I get out of it, and and. Uh, this way, people uh, don't ask questions we, which were asked before, so yes. they can look up. Uh, I uh, so so I answered almost two hundred questions like like this in the last two years. So whoever has a concrete question that that has something to do with value communication, pricing, or negotiation, they're welcome to 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 uh, reach me with that question, and the answer will reach them. Got it. I have a link that you provided, which was. Uh, fearlesspricing.com forward slash start here. Is that yeah. the link? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll have that in the show notes. Anyone who wants to reach out to you can start there. Is there a question that I should have asked you that would also give some uh, great value to those who are listening? So one of the more popular ones that, that people uh, ask me. So it's easy to know when your price is too high, people don't buy, mm -hmm. right? But how do you know if my it, 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 how do you know if your price is too low? Hmm. Right? Yeah, no, uh, tell me how. <laughs> <laughs> so th there's a number of symptoms, and I've spoken and written about it, but uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the shortest one, and, and the most prominent one is uh, if people say yes immediately mm -hmm. after your offer. So th this is why it's important whenever you can not to, to, to send the, the main offer through email or anything like that, but to say, this is a ballpark, let's meet, let's talk. What's your problem? Uh-huh, okay, so this is my offer, right? And if they say, okay, within two, three seconds of you saying the price, you know it's too low. Mm -hmm. it's subconscious, they were expecting more and they want to cl close down any negotiation before you add something, tack on, tack on something, right? So if you say your fee and people say, okay, then you know you, you could, there's nothing you can do for this one. That yes. you, that, that, that's lost. But next time try aiming higher uh, and you will be pleasantly surprised. And, and it's so funny you said that because it reminds me of a situation of mine many years ago. Oh, so far back. I was in the pension administration business and I had a client who was building a house and uh, the bank he was using went out of business and he hadn't finished the house yet and he needed funding. 
So I arranged for an individual to finish funding the loan that he lost. And I was going to charge him, I don't remember really the numbers. I think I was going to charge him $500 for putting him in touch with someone who could complete, provide him the money to finish his home. And I didn't, you know, let's say it was $500. And he said, Rennie, thank you so much. This really helped. You know, now I, my home is getting completed. I got a loan. Blah, blah, blah. What do I owe you? And I said, you know, I'm really struggling with that. You know, you are a client. I'm not sure what to charge you. I'm, I'm not sure yet. And he says, well, how about $3,000? I was going to charge him 500 <laughs> And then he said 3000 And I sat there because I was stunned by it. And, I, and he could see, oh, Randy, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> That's what he followed up with the statement. And I said, you know, don't worry about it, Steve. You know, you're a client. I appreciate our, our relationship. That sounds fine. And it was six <laughs> times more than I was going to charge him. <laughs> those those ki kinds of situations wake us up. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, 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 that's, that's like typical. When you lock into uh, something like that, you start wondering, am I usually <laughs> charging six times less? And sometimes, sometimes the answer is yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, he valued, I've seen cases like this. Yes, obviously, so, he valued what I provided far more than the effort I expended. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, I I had a, a Canadian client that charged things in Canadian dollars, but she mostly sold to to Americans. And uh, just just for for my sake, she tried out one month. She she's doing masterminds, so a lot of recurring fees, right? Mm -hmm. So she charged the same price, but in American dollars, with, which at the time was 25%, uh, 24% more. Mm -hmm. And everybody just paid. Nobody mentioned anything. Nobody said anything. She said, how, how is this possible? Because you're undervalued. They're fine with charging uh, with you charging much more, so you charging a little more? Yeah, no, okay, whatever. Yeah. Well, Philip, so, yeah. this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you for being on the Wealth on Any Income show. Glad to be here, really. And to all of those who are listening, if you'd like to know how books, movies, and society programs you to be poor and what the cure is, then log on to wealthonanyincome.com forward slash TEDx. You'll hear my TED Talk where you can request a free nine-step roadmap to complete financial choice, which is the cure for that programming. And you can also receive a weekly email with tips, techniques, or inspiration around your business or your money. And if you'd like to see how you can increase your wealth and donate to the causes that touch your heart, please check out our affordable program, Wealth with Purpose. To my listeners, thank you for tuning in. You can listen to the Wealth on Any Income podcast on your favorite platform, and please rate review, and subscribe. Until next week, be prosperous. Bye-bye for now.